All right, what up, y'all? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. So PlayStation has announced a state of play for tomorrow, September 14th, 14th at uh, 2 p.m. Pacific time. Why are y'all telling me Pacific time? Pacific, nobody cares about Pacific time. Uh, 5 p.m. Eastern time, you know, God's chosen time zone, what any, you know, logic, logical human being really cares about. Uh, so that's when it's going down. And this is another state of play for indies and third party games. So this is not the state of play that most people have been long awaiting, which is the first, the first party state of play or the first party event, right? Um, this is going to be indie, PSVR 2, and third party partners, as the blog says. Now, here's the thing. One. You already had this. You already did this earlier this year, right? And y'all got to realize, I'm a very calm and reasonable person. Very. I'm not irrational like other people's complaints, right? I think there's a middle ground for, uh, you know, for how you feel. I, I feel like some people just go off the deep end on, on the completely unreasonable end of the spectrum, right? Just a, a bit exaggerative, you know, a bit theatrical, right? Performative, if you will. Because I stand by, and I've said it, that play, the, the output of the PlayStation 5 since this generation has started and the, the performance and the output has been amazing. I'm talking about exclusively, right? Um, first party studios has been amazing the first three years, especially if you compare it next to the PS4. I don't know how you debate with that. I don't know how you argue with that, right? And that's for us reasonable people who, you know, actually remember things and don't have complete amnesia and who aren't blinded by, I guess, nostalgia of anything before. Because anybody who actually remembers the first three years of the PlayStation 4 was not phenomenal. Nothing near it, right? But people look back at it like it was the golden age or some shit when the first three years was, was, wasn't great. The output, the, the quality. It wasn't that, right? It was actually a little bit dry. That's why they got the name Sparse Station and Indie Station. Um, and that's why they were heavily relying on indies at the time, right? Not because, oh, they, they put on the front and the facade, oh, we love indies so much. No, we were just using you until our first party games caught up and we can release banger after banger. That was the, that was the real case, right? So I'm, I remember that very well. Don't care what anybody else will will tell you, um, you know, now and act like, you know, and try to rewrite, rewrite history. That's what it actually was. The first three years was not great. They had some good stuff here and there, but it was few and far between. It was after the three year period where they really started smoking. That's why for me, I give them, you know, some some grace and, and some leeway because I look at the history. Right. I, I judge you. And. I criticize you based on based on your history. See, this was an off year for PlayStation. I consider this your your one really down year that you get. If you look at the history of PlayStation, there's always they always start kicking after that three year period. But they're they're ahead of the you know, they're ahead of the, uh, you know, the schedule with their releases on PS5. This is their output has has been great. So they they've actually kicked off better than they have in, in any recent generation. But I feel like they've gone to the complete other end of the spectrum now, where before they would release, they would announce games way too far, like three, four years in advance. And they've done that this generation with a few games, like Wolverine, for example, not too many of them, but there's been one or two that they have done that. But now I feel like they're moving you know, to the other extreme where we're not announcing nothing officially. Most of the, the games we know that's coming is unofficially. We're not announcing nothing officially until it's, it's seemingly completely finished and it's ready to be released soon. And I feel like, bro, there's a middle ground. Don't announce it when it's three years off, but you don't got to announce it the year it's coming out either. And that's what they seem to be doing. They seem to want to announce stuff the, the year that it's, that it's coming out, like, or within 
the next 12 months or something when I just don't think that's I, I, I don't really feel like you need to do that either. So that's what is bothering me. Like I said, I give you grace. I give you leeway. You, you, like I said, you get one down year for me. And this is the down year because they've only really, they're only really going to release Spider-Man. And there's been some, you know, PSVR stuff and some other like, you know, third party partnership stuff. Cool. But first party wise, this was a down year for you. You get one down year for me. Because historically, you always have that down year. So I'm not killing them for that, right? Because I look at the history, like I said, but 2024 can't be 2023. I, don't, I didn't complain this year because I understand what happened previous generations. But after I give you that one down year, no, I'm not. One major first party title is not acceptable after this point. 2024 no that that's that's not flying that is not acceptable at all i'm gonna judge it as a third party and an indie showcase because that's what it is but i'm not necessarily excited for it that's not what i wanted to see that's not what i wanted to hear i want to hear about about first party and it's not unreasonable at this point because some of these you know first party studios bro they've been cooking for a long time now three four years and I feel like that's more than enough time for you to have something good to show. I'm not even saying a release date, but I feel like, and you know, games, ga games take, games are taking more, even more time to develop now. It's, it's only increasing the amount of time it takes for the development. So I take that all into consideration. Like I said, I'm not this unreasonable person. I try to be fit, you know, I'm, I'm down the middle with it, whether it's the single player or their multiplayer games as a service, whichever, I know something has got to be like ready to show off or, or announce, acknowledge. I, I just, I just think they should be able to, to do that by now. And I don't think personally, no, I don't think it's a problem with quality necessarily, because I have no reason to believe that the quality of the things they're, uh, they're making, cooking back there, is just bad, and that's what they're struggling with. I have no reason to believe that. So I just think things are taking longer uh, to develop than they did before, and they don't want to announce anything too soon, and they've gone to the other extreme, like I said. So I think that's the problem, and they're being like some, and, and I'm shocked that a lot of this stuff hasn't even leaked. I'm like, bro, how, how has, so, has some of this stuff not leaked. That's the thing. I, I'm kind of mad about it, but I'm going to kill you for 2024 when 2024 gets here and you, and if you don't release nothing, oh, it's a problem. It's a problem. So right now, yeah, it, like dog, I wish I could, I could get some announcements and know what's, what's happening. But if 2024 gets here and you don't, and I don't get releases, it's definitely an issue for me. It's definitely, and, and, and like dudes is in the, you know, is online cheering. Oh, stay to play. Woo. Like, I don't, I, what are y'all hyping? What are y'all celebrating? This is Indies, PSVR, and third party. Why are y'all hyping this? Because honestly, all of this stuff could probably be an email. It could probably be a trailer on YouTube. We could get this from them, from the actual developers of these games. So that's how I feel about this. I am going to live stream it. Doesn't mean I'm not going to enjoy it, but it's not necessarily what I want. And one of the, you know, the points and the arguments that get brought up a lot uh, when it comes to conversations like this is, oh, if this was Xbox, you wouldn't give them any uh, grace or give them any leeway. And I'm like, I, when I see that, I'm like, this is such a dumb argument because it matters who it is. The, the party that does something matters in regards to how much criticism they deserve. Are y'all that like slow and dense that y'all think everybody deserves the same amount of criticism? Depending on who it is, that should change the amount of criticism they get. So people think that treating someone or an, a, an entity fairly means treating them the same or equal. That's not what that means. 
You treat a a certain party based on their merits and based on their performance. And that happens in every facet of life. And y'all, I don't know why y'all seem to like not realize that, right? I mean, when it comes to sports, Tyree Kill is considered one of the best receivers, top five receivers, top three. The man is a beast. He's dangerous. If he drops a pass, people will be disappointed, but they're not going to kill him as if somebody who has three drops in one game does, because that's typically not something Tyreek Hill does. He's usually dependable. He's, he usually delivers. He's going to have like near 200 yards a game. If I got a kid who usually gets A's and they get an F one time, I'm not going to kill him. But if I have a kid that continually fails, yeah, I'm looking at them different. My boss at work, if I mess up one time, they're going to say something about it, but they ain't going to kill me like the other employee that's messed up 10 times and is, is a usual screw up. And I don't know why people don't realize that. Treating something fairly doesn't mean treating them the same. And yeah, Xbox is doing better than ever. But historically, their history is why people criticize them more. And I don't know why people like seem to ignore that. When you produce, and this goes for Nintendo too, Nintendo and PlayStation can get away with stuff historically that Xbox hasn't. Because historically, Xbox has not done the things that Nintendo and PlayStation has done. So it's real simple as that. Just wanted to comment on that because it's such a stupid argument. But anyway, that's how I feel about it. Um, but I'll live stream it. Um, but it's, I think it's, it's strange. I think it's strange and I want the first party stay to play. So let me know what y'all think about this. I'll catch y'all later. I'm out of here. Follow me on Twitter. Hit the like button. Hit the notification bell. All that good stuff. I'll catch y'all later. Peace.